Hello everyone, welcome to week four of our study in the book of Romans. You really can never read this letter too many times. It is a masterpiece and it contains so much wisdom about what a Christian is and how does someone live as a Christian. Right now, everything from the 90s seems to be making a comeback, so I thought I'd bring up a sensational news story from the mid-90s that I'm sure most of us uh, either remember or we've heard of. I'm talking about the dramatic murder trial of O.J. Simpson. He was accused of a brutal, horrific murder, and he was a huge celebrity, a football star, a movie star, and so the whole country was tuned in, and the whole country was eager to see justice served. In that moment, there were so many of us who were convinced that he was guilty, and so when he was acquitted, a lot of people were angry, a lot of people were outraged, and it's because we long for justice, or at least we ought to long for justice. Proverbs 17.15 says, He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the righteous are both alike an abomination to the Lord. It's a major feature of our being made in the image of God that we seek justice. And so the question we're faced with in Romans 3 is how can God be just but also pass over our former sins? And that's what Paul is going to explain here in Romans 3. What happened to the righteousness of God? He tells us that the righteousness of God has been revealed. The same righteousness that the law and the prophets speak of, it's been revealed to all people because all people have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This is how God's righteousness or his faithfulness to his covenant is being revealed. He places Jesus in the place of mercy. He places Jesus in the place of atonement for our sins. Your Bible might say, um, propitiation, or it might say atonement or appeasement. In Greek, we have the word hilasterion, which uh, it can mean appeasement or payment for our sins. Uh, it can also mean the place, the mercy seat. Your Bible might say mercy seat uh, in this passage. The mercy seat is that place on the Ark of the Covenant where the priests would place the bread. Um, when, when Jesus took the bread at the Last Supper and he broke it and he said, this is my body, he, he didn't do that because there just happened to be some bread there. He, he wouldn't have used a banana. Uh, the bread has deep significance. And so when we take uh, communion, we're remembering that Jesus Christ is himself the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Jesus Christ himself is the fulfillment of God's covenant with Israel. In his commentary, Romans for Everyone, N.T. Wright says that Paul presents this moment in history as kind of like the moment in a movie where the hero appears or the tide suddenly turns and, and now there's suddenly a hope of, of rescue. Suddenly there's, there's hope and there's a, there's a new direction in the story. In Romans 3.21, Paul writes, but now, but now the righteousness of God has been revealed. And just like in any good story, this turning point, it doesn't just come out of nowhere. The hero isn't a random character that we're just suddenly being introduced to. Uh, the moment of rescue is established far earlier in the plot. And often people will, will question our faith and they'll say, why did God change? Why did God suddenly decide to be gentle and merciful and loving? And perhaps you've asked yourself the same question. And that interpretation of where the Bible story goes can really only be reached by not reading all of it together and by not understanding that all of it is one story. And for that reason, Paul takes us back to Genesis. In chapter 4 of Romans, Paul continues to take us back to the covenant, back to the original promise. He takes us back to the story of Abraham when Paul writes, but now the righteousness of God is revealed apart from the law. He's not introducing a brand new idea. This is the revelation of what was promised to Abraham. Paul invokes this story of Abraham because Abraham received righteousness before there was a law. See, God's righteousness has always been merciful. And justification has always come by faith. And now, the promise made to Abraham, to, to Jacob, to Moses, that promise is fulfilled. The righteousness of God is revealed to us, and that righteousness is ours through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen.